Hello everybody and welcome to the lore you know. We're taking a break today, or I guess since I'm here by myself today, I should say I'm taking a break today from the Scarred Lands and we're going to talk about, uh, it's going to be a special episode about a campaign setting known as Asunder. Now Asunder is especially dear to me because I am one of the writers for it, so I'm super stoked to talk about this for the first time on The Lore You Know. And the reason that it's happening today, tomorrow is Halloween, we're doing our special Asunder uh, episode of, or, or live stream um, for Halloween on Twitch. Um, and it's all going to be based on the Isle of Cthone, which is our topic for today. So... What is Asunder? Uh, Asunder started off 20-some years ago. And I'll be honest, when it started off, it was it was very much like the Forgotten Realms. It's, uh, it's always been a high fantasy setting. Um, but, I mean, we were, we were pretty young back then, and we didn't really have um, ideas of our own. I don't want to say that. It was... We didn't have originality <laughs> back then. Um, but over the years, we've definitely morphed, uh, my fellow creators and I have morphed it into something that we hope is is really um, entertaining for others as much as it is for us. So, uh, because there will be future episodes of, of Asunder uh, lore, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into it, so we're just going to jump into the Isle of Cthone. So the Isle of Cthone sits off the east coast of the main continent, which is Aramesh. Um, and at one time, about 450 years ago, it was actually a, a, an ally. There was there were definitely a... Hello, Jason. Thank you for joining us today. Um, it was a... a definitely an ally to others although its people which were mostly human could be considered insular uh definitely a little uh nationalistic i guess i apologize for being quiet today i am actually losing my voice um today is a perfect day to talk about cathone because it is full of undead and i'm feeling rather undead myself so sorry if i'm quiet i'll boost my audio a little bit here and see if that helps any better you let me know as i keep talking so, uh, yeah, it was, it was allied to uh, several cities on Aramesh. Uh, there were trade agreements, but its people were a little insular. They, they weren't very welcoming to outsiders, and they, um, they tended to not really go beyond their own borders. Now, the isle itself was part of the mainland uh, about 1,500 years ago, um, before Sar, the Mad God, and... Again, not going to delve too deep into things, um, but the the uh, the being known as Sar is often called the Mad God, although that wasn't his original form. Um, and when he went mad, he uh, he broke a lot of shit, and he essentially struck the planet in a um, godlike way. So. Imagine that gods don't really exist in the same plane, but they can affect the plane. And so in a conflict, a swipe that he took um, really at his other gods or, you know, his fellow gods um, really did damage to the planet. And so this massive area of Aramesh was destroyed, sunken under the ocean that flooded and over it. But there are these islands that remain. And... Uh, Cthone is, is really the remnants of, of a land that once was part of Aramesh. Um, so they, they uh, you know, they were insular for the longest time. And then things really clamped down. And the outside world really doesn't understand this. But something happened. And during, after that, that thing that the world doesn't know about, at large, there are those who know and are, are in the know by those who are still um, cognizant on on Cthone. we'll get to that. Um, have really you know tried to keep people from the island. So there's this like horrible rumor that, or like you know the average person on on Aramesh believes that the Cthoni are really just like very um, 
xenophobic nationalists. Like, they don't want to know you. They don't want you to come to their island. And if you do, the rumor is that you're kidnapped, you're taken, and you're put into slavery. Um, these things have truths to them, but they aren't the truth. And so only a handful of people know the truth that are on the isle or on the continent of Aramesh because they really don't want people to go to the island. And there's a reason for that. 450 years ago, give or take a few, um, in the city of Gator, which sits kind of near the middle of Cathone, there was a ruling group of people that came together and based on what the mad god had done um, to achieve his own divinity they wanted to use this and, and alter it so they didn't also go insane but they wanted to use this and elevate their people to a form of immortality now we're not talking about undeath we're not talking about these people were looking for lichdom like so many wizards do but these people really wanted to grant their people a, a form of immortality similar to what a god may reach. Um, they weren't looking for godhood, though. They weren't looking for that kind of power, just like the chance to live their lives free of age, free of disease, free of the, the ravages of time. And one could say they succeeded, but there was a lot of failure in that success. So this wave of energy poured forth from Gator, altering everything on the island. And the people that lived there were forever changed. They became undead, um, which wasn't, again, wasn't the plan, but it is what happened. And those at the outer edges were were changed at a, I guess you could say a molecular level, but like an existence level. And they are now undead and they're called the Cthoni. Um, but those at the center became warped. Again, they were using the same magics, the same processes that the Mad God used, but they had altered them thinking they knew better, thinking they had some kind of control over this magic. And instead this magic warped them and they became these horrendous undead. Now, over the years, the Cthoni that are at the edges, they're not evil, they're not good. Uh, good and evil don't really exist in Asunder. Um, it's, it's a personal thing, it's not like a, uh, I, I really don't subscribe to the alignment thing for D&D. For it's been a long contention point for me, but you know, it, it's part of the rules. But for Asunder, I can do what I want because I made it. So I removed that and I also removed racial abilities, um, which I'm gonna take a quick break here and throw a link into the channel because for the next three days, you can download a free copy of the Cthoni as well as included in it is a uh, ability race modifier alternate so it's it's really based off your class and your background as to what your racial or what that racial ability modifier would go to instead of because you are an elf or a human or whatever um so go download that for free for the next few days if you're watching this live or in the next couple of days um it will be removed from drive through uh after that although i I strongly feel it will probably show up again in the future. We will see. So, uh, yeah, so they, um, they're not good or evil people. They're just people that are trying to survive. And what they found out quickly is, one, they're undead, but their condition is highly contagious, um, not only from themselves, but from the island itself, which is now saturated with this force. So people who come to the island who aren't already undead become undead. And it's not like a slow process. It's a rather rapid thing. And if you step foot on the island for more than just a day, sometimes even th there's a process for it as far as rolling saves. Um, but it's, it's pretty quick. And 
So they really don't want people coming there. And so they put out this rumor that they are these xenophobic slave traders or really slave owners because uh, they don't trade their slaves to anyone because they don't actually keep slaves. Um, people who come to the island are given a choice. Sometimes. If they come in and they're just invading, usually the Cathoni will just defend themselves. And if the invaders die, then they die. To them, there is a certain level of they have no control over it. And so it isn't even a moral choice any longer. They have to stop this curse from spreading. But those who come and want to know what's going on on your island, by the time they reach Cathone, they're probably infected. If they're not, they're going to be infected soon. But the Cathone give them the choice. They're like, do you want to exist as this undead thing and potentially find a cure? Because they don't age. They don't die of natural causes. Or do you, do you want to die? Because it's a valid choice. People don't necessarily want to become shambling monsters. Now, the Cathone have re like retained their their intelligence and their abilities. They have uh, magic. They have, um, you know, if you are an adventurer, you have class abilities and all that. They're not they're not shambling zombies, but depending on which form of the curse you achieve, you may become become. Uh, what is called a perpetual, where you essentially look like you did in life. Over time, your skin changes to become much more pallid. It's it's faded, uh, kind of dead looking. Um, very old perpetual kind of have that like bluish tinge that you might see in like a zombie movie where the zombies aren't rotting yet, but um, that, that very old undead where like blood has just stopped flowing. Then you have the Afit, and the Afit are uh, what you would think would be a zombie. When you when you look at zombie movies or zombies in 5e or other games, like the rotting, falling apart, uh, but they don't die. So it's this prolonged, perhaps forever, condition of being this rotting body. And so... You know, no, no Cthulhu wants to put this on anyone. What's worse is the undead that exist in the center of the island hunger for the, the force. I don't want to call it the life force, but the energy that animates the undead on the island, which is, to be honest, a little different than what a necromancer might animate a skeleton with in Aramesh or you know in a different setting it's this strange warping of reality that the people of Gator unleashed upon their own island and so it's become for the Cathoni it's become this ongoing battle for survival of keeping people out and defending themselves from the outside world and defending themselves from the inner island where these horrendous undead um, seek to eat them, but not just like their body, but the essence that keeps them active. So it's been a it's been a long, hard road for the Cathoni. And using magics that they've developed, they have managed to put what they you know call the dome over over the center of the island and trap those undead in there. Unfortunately, over time, that dome has weakened um, the energies put into it. There's a lot of uh, uh, ley line magic in, in uh, Asunder, and those meeting points of energy have dwindled and dried up. And so the there are these stone plinths around the island that power the dome and that's running out and so these undead in the center are escaping and so now it's like they have to fight those undead um on a fairly constant basis and and this is getting very spoilery so if you don't want to know as a player plug your ears and Maybe skip ahead in the video if you're watching this later, or um, 
I'll give you a thumbs up when I'm done saying this so you can come back and, and watch. So those who are, have, have the responsibility of keeping the, the dome active have found that they can use the energy from within themselves, this, this, this life-giving energy, unlife-giving energy, um, they can use it to, to feed the dome, to keep it active. And so they've rerouted some of these plants to draw energy from the Cthoni. That's not a, uh, an ongoing thing. I mean, it's an ongoing thing, but it's not a perpetual thing. You can't suck the life out of something and expect it to live forever. Even the Cthoni, who are really ideally forever because they this energy will keep them alive however it drains that and it takes it away and so as time has gone on recently this effect is killing off the Cthoni so their numbers are dwindling um, and you know you might they might be sitting down to dinner with their family and all of a sudden pop Cthoni over here all of a sudden just spasms and this essence can be seen evaporating from him and he collapses and is just no more. Um, that's a very spoilery part because tomorrow in the game, um, they're, they're going to be learning about some of this stuff. So if any of the players were watching and got that, boo on you. But anyway, thumbs up, come back. So what else can I tell you about the island? So the Cthoni themselves, um, they, the, the effete, the ones who are rotten, they, they cannot have children. They can't perpetuate. They can't uh, uh, increase their numbers. And the perpetuals can. However, um, when a perpetual Cthoni is born, um, hello, along. And yes, absolutely. So uh, when I mentioned dinner, it does mean the Cthoni can still eat and drink. Uh, so a feet don't need to they can just like a zombie they don't need to eat, breathe eat or drink they can go on and and exist without those things however they can if they choose and perpetuals do uh, require at least some form of sustenance but it's much diminished com compared to uh, what a, a fully living person you could look at the perpetual cathony as being half undead but they don't have uh lifespans um they, they don't grow old they don't die from old age uh so yeah they uh they do definitely need uh food and drink and they do have kids and those kids are born alive but they are born cursed so they are already cursed to turn undead and even if they le left the island that would happen um the Cthoni had been really cautious about sending people off island because their presence, while it doesn't infect other lands like like Cthona is infected, um, meeting any life form, any creature, any humanoid, any giant, any you know anything that is living, other undead would be fine, constructs would be fine, but any living creature. Uh, they have a high probability of becoming infected just by proximity. It's not even a, if you get hit by a Cthoni with, uh, with their weapon attacks or they claw you or they bite you, it's pretty much a certain right away you're going to become cursed by this, this thing. Um, if you are in their presence, over time it becomes a certainty. Uh, and so they don't, they've been really cautious about going out. And so they've, they've kind of tried to like take these kids that they have away from the island to see if they'll they'll survive uh as as normal but they can't they have to be cautious of where they go but over time they found that by at the youngest age seven but by the time they're in their early 20s they they make this change um and on the one hand it's it's helped them to keep their their numbers going they have um they have a dwindling popula population the the effete cannot reproduce the perpetuals can but it's at a much lower um occurrence rate and then you know those kids still have to grow up and then become undead and so like they this this last 
defense they that they have against what is trying to leach out of the center of the island and keeping from people from going into the island um that number is dwindling and again spoilers so so go away so spoilers you know that that dwindling number is also because the those plinths those magic uh rocks that are creating the dome um it it's draining them and it's killing them off and the the elders know this and are are desperately seeking other ways to power the dome um which may come into play tomorrow so come back if you are trying to miss spoilers and what else can i tell you i feel like it I was going to say something else. Um, so the... Crap, I have derailed. Hang on one sec. I'm going to check on something. So the rot is what the uh, the curse has been named. And what's interesting about the magic that keeps the dome over it, um, it was designed so only the undead can see it. Uh, so they can make sure they can watch it and make sure it's there. But, you know, you have flying creatures, you have uh, people on ships going by, and you don't want this weird bubble to be visible by others. Um, and that that bubble has over time taken on this, this uh, purplish, greenish, like, rot of its own. And so the people of Cthone know something is wrong with it they know it's weakening um and they know that it will not always protect them and so you know this this active um search for how to stop what's in the center of the island has been ongoing but also imagine not having to sleep um for for most of the day the feet need to essentially in, enter what they call torpor which is just a deep trance for one hour and then the uh, the perpetuals need to do a four hour trance similar to elves. Uh, to, it's essentially for their minds to have that moment of just being uh, turned off or or at least in a dreamlike state to, to heal. Um, less about their body needing to rest. Um, an important rule note is they do need to still take, you know, an eight hour long rest for abilities to come back. Uh, they don't. The, the, the race doesn't get to just ignore the rules of the game, um, but as far as like what they need to do to uh, stay sane and stay healthy, um, they, they do need to do that rest. But they have a lot of extra time otherwise, and so they've really um, refined their crafts. Their, their metalwork is amazing, their building skills are amazing, and there are people that are actively searching for a cure and causes, you know, and, and uh, magic to fight what is going on. And so um, another big source of magic in, in the Sunder are, are fey, uh, we're just going to call them fey magics for now, um, but a lot of that is like uh, fairy rings, so like uh, those magic or uh, mushroom circles and stuff are often used to bolster magical teleportation is all messed up for for the whole world because of uh, Sar and the way that he he didn't just damage the planet physically but he really tore at the fabric of reality around it and so teleporting around is really dangerous um, but what they found is like these fey creatures are imbued with magic of their own and they are usually able to teleport between places and so by studying that, um, people of the world have found that there, there are magics that are tied to these points. And on the island, there were some of these circles of mushrooms that are fey-based. They're not just randomly uh, nature-grown mushrooms. And so there have been, and it was really interesting to see. And in fact, uh, tomorrow you will see on, on the game, You'll see that one of the players is playing one of the uh, Circle of the Spores, which is taken from the uh, um, the Watsi books, which I can't like republish for this, but it makes so much sense for this world, and I'm so excited to see it. Um, but yeah, these these mushrooms are are kind of one part of like the study going on. Um, how can they use the magics from from those to keep 
uh, the, the, the dome going. But m what's also interesting about the Chthoni is that they feel, they feel abandoned by the gods. They don't actively worship. There are those who may uh, either make lip service to gods or they may just have like old faith in them from back when everything started. So it's, it's not, God worship isn't gone from Cthone, but it's, it's pretty rare because one, they can't be healed by divine magic. It's almost like the gods want them to die. Um, clerics, their magics don't always work. And usually it's dependent on who they're asking um, for magic because some of the gods have actively or at least seemingly um, turned against the Chthoni like they uh, they don't grant even non-healing spells to these clerics so a lot of that, that faith has disappeared um, but obviously they needed to find a way to keep themselves hale and, and healthy and how does that ha happen well this has been a conversation many times in, in several groups that I've played in, but is a undead creature um, capable of being fixed by the spell Mending? And it's always up to the DM in the groups that I'm in, but using that for 5th edition, uh, we've updated the idea for Cthoni where they've come up with these spells that were built off of Mending. So a transmutation spell instead of evocation, I believe, is what... Uh, like Cure Wounds is. And so they're essentially using powerful versions of mending to fix their bodies because they're less um, active live flesh than they are just... They're not objects, which is what mending uses. But this is, you know, they've, they've altered the spell. So there are, there are new spells in the Cthoni, um download that are available, and they are designed to heal undead and constructs, which wasn't intended, but over the years, um, the Cthoni have found that this is an effect of the spell as well. So yeah, that was a, a, a fun thing to kind of throw in there. So that pretty much wraps up the Cthoni. I don't want to give up too much of what's in the center of the aisle because it, it might get a little spoil, spoilery, but I will say that... Um, Dragons are super powerful creatures uh, as they get older. That's kind of been part of most of this, the uh, most every setting, and this one in, in, is definitely included. Um, they 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 grow very powerful in magic, and and just their own magical essence gets stronger. And so I will say that there are probably some undead dragons in the center of the island and this is actually part of the the process that the Gatorans, so the uh the people that were um, the rulers over the island they they harnessed the power of these dragons as part of their ritual and when everything borked and went sideways they created essentially draco liches which is there there's rumor in, for the Cthoni that there is a Draco Lich in the center, which is terrifying for them because they're Draco Liches are nasty, but in reality, there are probably at least seven. Um, they're just not seen on a regular basis. Um, so that is a major spoiler. They won't get into that tomorrow, but that, that would be a campaign level thing. If you were playing on Cthone, there are a lot of unique undead that have been designed for this for the series, um, or or you know for the island for the setting. Alon, that is a great question. Uh, can the Cthoni use constructs as emissaries for the rest of the world? That is how they have sent out messages to these other uh, cities. So when they send emissaries to, um, there is a city called Oberamagon, which is the closest main city. It sits on the coast. Um, when they send an emissary over there to the the leaders to be like, "Hey, just checking in. Shit is still borked here. Don't visit, don't come visit." Um, 
because they can't really rely on on magics to send messages, uh, but they can they can send constructs. That is a great question. I I should have thought of it earlier. Thanks. So yeah, that is that is how they send that out. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of unique undead. There are a lot of creatures that get their own undead stats. Another curse that is rampant on, or or at least uh, has some some major implications on, or in the Asunder setting is lycanthropy, and there are definitely undead lycanthropes, which are probably some of my favorite monsters on the island. I don't know why. I think just the visual of them for me is always super creepy and terrifying. But anyway, um, I could go on and on and on about Asunder in general, and I will in future Asunder episodes of Lore You Know. But for now, um, if anyone has any other questions, throw them out, and I will wrap up otherwise. Um... Join us tomorrow at 3, I believe it's 3 o'clock, let me double check, 3 o'clock tomorrow, which is Halloween, on Twitch at WH Publications, uh, if you're watching this live, or if you uh, manage to catch it on YouTube before the show starts, uh, we're doing a Halloween, it's not Halloween theme, but it's for Halloween, uh, and, and what better to play for Halloween than an undead race, right? Uh, so they're they're delving into Asunder for the first time ever on the air. So I'm super excited for that. Um, I hope everyone will tune in and watch that. I'm going to be joined by John and Chaz, who play the Curiosity Cache on Fridays with me. And uh, Ryan, who is one of the co-creators of Asunder, is going to join. He's going to be playing uh, one of our, our unique classes for the setting, which... Um, I am super stoked to see in, in play. Uh, it is essentially a summoning. It was originally a summoning paladin, but we've kind of removed the 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 holy factor. It's they're not really a divine class, um, but they are a, a summoning paladin, which is going to be super interesting to see in in this group. And then I'm joined by two new people, Rachel and Kelsey, who. Uh, offered to join the game. I'm super stoked for them to play on, on the channel for the first time. And so that is, again, that is October 31st for those watching live tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern here on Twitch. Uh, if you don't get to watch live, check the YouTube channel later in the week. What else? You can follow me on WH Publications or on Twitter or on uh, Facebook. It's WH... Sorry, I got that backwards. On Facebook, it's WH Publications on Twitter, it's WH Pubs. Um, if you head over to whpublications.com, there's all the links and you have the link for the Discord channel. Feel free to join us and chat. Um, I'm always doing announcements over there for all the things coming out. Another big exciting uh, announcement and we will be covering it on, as far as I know, next week's episode of The Lore You Know where we're gonna be jumping back to Scarlands is the Frostlands of Fenrilic book. I am so stoked that this is out. It has been an ongoing project, uh, group project for a bunch of freelancers for uh, Onyx, Onyx Path Publishing. And not only does it, not only was it fun for us to work on, but it opens up Fenrilic, the frozen kind of Antarctica, but the art placed in the Arctic um, continent of, uh, for, for Scarlands, the Scarlands setting. Um, it is now available over on Drive Through RPG, the Solution Vault, and it opens up the community content program for that setting. So previously, you can only publish for Scarred Lands in the continent of Gelsbad, and now you can also go to Fenrilic. And and while there was lore from Third Edition, it was so it was one third of a book that they put out at the very end of the Third Edition run, and so there wasn't a whole bunch of lore, and so. This is an exciting opportunity for the community as a whole to really come together and build lore together. I am super stoked about this. Um, so go pick up that book, make your own community content, put it up on the Solution Vault, get paid. It's awesome. Yeah, so until next week when Sarah Stewart will be rejoining me for Scarred Lands Chat. Everyone take care. Hope to see you tomorrow at the Asunder Game. 
Uh, take care of yourselves, of each other, and happy Halloween.